Hey everyone, my name's Logan. I'm part of the Van Clan team. You'll sometimes see me on this channel, and today we're doing something a little bit different. We share a lot of beautiful van tours, which isn't always the reality of van life. I've been living in this van for four plus years now, and it's not always pretty, so we're gonna take you inside and give you a realistic van life van tour. So right away, when you come into the van, I'm gonna show you our worst part of the van, and that is the floors. Um, we cover it with this mat because as you can see, they're pretty messed up. We actually redid these just under a year ago, and I think we've had to do them once a year since we moved in. So that's the gross part of the van, and that's just the reality. Things are always breaking. Right here, we've got a sink full of dirty dishes that I have yet to get to today, and I just left them to show you guys. That's just how life goes. And then over here is the kitchen. Um, we've repainted our cabinets countless times and they've started peeling now, so it's definitely time for us to revamp the living space, but we do have a propane stove and oven that I use every single day. Getting an oven in the van was probably the best thing we could have ever done um, just to make life easier. And then if you turn over here, I'm gonna show you the cab. Every van lifer knows this conundrum. When you're not driving a lot, which we don't do because we're pretty stationary where we're living, this becomes a pile for everything. So we've got laundry up here, extra flour, a juicer, recycling. Anything that we don't want in our living space, I tuck it up here and close the curtains. <laughs> so in the spirit of showing you our van life reality, I'm gonna show you some more broken things. Over here, we have broken hinges on our cabinets that have come out because we added this mat in. So it's a bit of a pain to get into this cabinet, to be honest with you, we have to fix it. And then up here, we have a bulkhead that we added a couple years into living in the van. We were realizing that we were actually accumulating a lot of items and things that we actually needed. So they go up here like mitts, charging cables, all that kind of stuff. And then over here is the rest of the kitchen. We have very stuffed cabinets with all of our food and then very empty cabinets because I have to do dishes. And then if you come over here, um, more drawers with food. And then in here is our fridge. It's a Waco, which is now Dometic. So it's very old, but it works very well for us. And we pack it with as much as we can. So over on this side of the kitchen, I've already showed you our dirty dishes. Um, we have a diesel heater down here. And under the sink is typically garbage and recycling, but since we are living pretty stationary right now, we actually have a bathhouse that I do all of our dishes in and we didn't need much water in the van in the winter time. So instead of pumping it from the back of our van under our bed from our water tank, David, who's behind the camera right now, has made up a different system using a water jug and a gray water jug. This is our table setup. Um, Sadie's bed goes right here. Typically we had a drawer down here, but we actually took that out to move her bed in. She likes having a little cave, so it gives us more living space. Um, David's clothes go under here, and actually where I'm sitting right now is a compost toilet that we don't use anymore since we're stationary on our property and have an outhouse that we've built. Um, there's a table here which works great, except I do have to say, if you're two people living in a van, this setup can get old really fast because you're, Sadie, come here, van, come on. This setup can get old really fast because you're constantly having to push the table in if someone wants to go on the bed or whatnot, and it gets real annoying. Sadie's a little whiny baby. <laughs> and then up here, as you can see, it's a different shaped cabinet. And the reason being is that David's six six and Sadie, come here. You can see that the cabinet's a different shape. And the reason being is that David's really tall. So when he was sitting here, his head was hitting the cabinet. So we had to cut it out for him. So he had more space and it looks pretty decent considering. And lastly, that's all storage. It goes back further than my arm can reach. So it's nice to be able to have storage that keeps warm and isn't in our garage space. 
So this is our bed. It's a double. However, if we were to do it again, we'd probably go for a queen size and just take up this space right here. Um, we find it gets a little bit stuffy with the walls. And then this is our Berkey. We use this for all of the water that we drink. We don't typically trust water sources, even if we know they're potable. So we like having this to filter everything out. And then up here is my clothing and underwear, socks down here and all that stuff. The van itself is a 2006 Dodge T1N Sprinter. And I share that with you because there are a lot of people putting loans down on very expensive vans these days. And it doesn't always have to be that way. We found this at auction for $5,000, put work into it to make it exactly what we wanted and had a home for under $20,000 all in. So I only share that to like give you some encouragement that it doesn't have to cost an arm and a leg. We painted the van a unique color because it was quite rusty. Um, and there's still some rust coming through four years later. There's little spots here and there. But overall, with 250,000 kilometers currently, this van has been everything for us and has never let us down. And then in the back, there's a garage space which has 500 amp hours of lithium batteries. And up top, we have 200 watts of solar. We found that wasn't enough for us while living off grid completely. So we put the rest of our solar on our bathhouse over here. This is our bathhouse. We have 670 watts of solar up top. 400 of those feed into the van in order to give us an extra boost and the other 270 feed into here in order to power everything inside and I'll give you a little look inside. So immediately when you come in the washroom, we have the sink. As I explained, we don't really have water in the van right now because of winter time. So I've been doing all of our dishes in here, which has been nice to have much more space than we'd have in the van. Over here is our shower. I really wanted a clawfoot tub, so we made it happen. Um, as you saw in the van, we don't have a shower, so we knew moving onto this property that we'd need to invest in something in order to be clean and <laughs> hygienic. So we put a couple thousand dollars into building this, and we love having the extra room in here. There is a hot water heater, which powers the shower and the sink to do dishes. Um, and then over here is David's desk. And you might be thinking it's a little bit weird to be having your office in your washroom. Yeah, maybe, but after living in a van for four plus years, we're pretty used to making things work and it's nice to have separation. And then if you come over here, this is our pit toilet. You also might be thinking a pit toilet in a washroom that might smell a bit. Not at all. We have a fan that's exhausting outside 24 hours a day. So we don't smell anything in here. It actually smells like a normal washroom. And when our friends come by, they're quite surprised by how much it feels like a normal house in here. That's all we've got for you today. We wanted to show you the reality of van life and how things break. As you saw, not everything is Instagram worthy or picture perfect inside of our van, but we make it home and that's what matters. I didn't spend five hours cleaning before you guys took a tour, so thanks for watching and safe travels.